Welcome to our viewers and participants from around the world for this final day of the World Didact Future Talk. I hope that you've been enjoying the previous two days as much as I have. I found it very, very interesting. Today we have a complex and interesting topic on artificial intelligence, Industry 4.0, and digital learning as well as the future of work. We have some wonderful speakers and sessions today which will explore all these issues. I know it sounds like a lot to cover, and it is, but it is all related and connected. In education, there are two sides for us concerning the issue about artificial intelligence. The first is how, when, and where to teach AI. AI is a major tool and integral component of IR 4.0, and is important for our educational systems to teach this as a skill as well as a vocation. This will help to create a workforce that can help drive the transformation in industry. Countries that do a poor job in this area will find that their industries will be stuck with older technologies, become less effective and efficient and less competitive and be left behind. The second issue is the impact of AI and digital learning on education. Can it be the catalyst to transform our educational systems and if so, in what way? Our two panels today will address these issues. To begin with, though, we have our opening by Mario Maruzzi, the Ambassador for the State Secretary for Education, Research and Innovation, followed by the Ambassador from Finland to Switzerland. Then to set the background and to inform us about global developments, we have the distinguished guest speaker from UNIDO, Cecilia Ugaz Estrada, who is then followed by our special inspirational futurist, Garen Leonhard. I'm really looking forward to all their presentations and statements. In the first panel session, we will discuss about AI and its impact on societies and work and IR 4.0 and its implications. As industries change towards increasingly more automated factories, we may see what I call the second wave of globalization. This would be characterized again by shifting economies, shifting wealth, shifting production locations, new jobs arising and old ones disappearing. Workers will once again be displaced, replaced and need to be retrained. In the first wave of globalization, we saw industry relocate from developed countries with high labor costs to lesser developed countries with lower labor costs. It was a boon for the developing world and has been one of the major underpinning forces behind raising billions of people out of poverty during the last few decades. This time, the second wave, we may see that flow reverse a bit. As labor intensive factories are automated, the location of these factories will be reconsidered. Low labor costs will not be the key deciding factor any longer. Instead, considerations may be access to highly skilled labor, which is required to keep those advanced machinery running. Also supply chain issues like proximity to raw sources of materials or final market destinations may be of strategic consideration. The locations where all these factors combine will become the new sweet spots or investments over the next coming decades. The second session deals with the impact of AI on education itself and the increasing role of digital and online learning. This is what some are calling Education 4.0. This is a favorite topic of mine as I think that digital learning in its various aspects is the key to improving and transforming education. Industry has experienced recent major transformations with the development of smart factories, smart cities, smart hospitals, and smart services. Social communication has transformed to where we rely upon technology to keep in touch with our family and our friends. Yet digital learning, until recently, has often been treated as a novelty or used only for supplemental learning, and in many schools around the world, it's not even yet used at all. Then enters COVID. This pandemic has brought this issue to the forefront as now showing how important digital learning can be to make our education systems more resilient and I believe more effective. This might be the one good thing that comes from the pandemic if we can say that it has raised the importance and awareness of digital learning. In the recent rush towards this digital learning, it was found out that many schools, institutions and countries were inadequately prepared. What I mean by this is that they did not have the infrastructure, the platforms, the bandwidth, the devices, the content, nor the curriculum. We also found out painfully that many of our teachers and administrators did not have the knowledge or the skills to implement such systems. This is what we have to correct. We need to have a more methodical, more holistic way of implementing digital learning. One that addresses all aspects and includes continuous support and training for teachers and updating both pre-service and in-service uh, teachers and training programs. Perhaps now is the time for smart education. 
as we implement the digital learning environment, we can look forward to using AI as part of our educational resources and toolkit. It can be used to create knowledge banks, experts that are similar to what IBM has done with Watson in the medical field. It can be used to assist students on their learning journeys by monitoring how they learn and then offering up materials in a variety of ways that they prefer. It can test to recognize prior knowledge and create faster learning pathways for the student so that he does not have to relearn things he already knows. It can also find out what knowledge or skills the student lacks and continue to work with them until they master it. These techniques and tools may finally enable us to implement differentiated and adaptive learning and move away from linear group learning to multi-pathway, non-linear, individualized learning. AI can help bring personalized learning and assessments, which will not only strengthen competency, but speed up the learning process. I'm sure that our future is scared will have some interesting comments for us surrounding these topics. The development of high quality digital learning systems and content can help level the educational playing field globally. It can aid teachers to deliver higher standard learning to rural or disadvantaged areas, which can result in better opportunities for the students. To develop these new systems, content and tools, it takes investment, and these resources need to be adapted to each country's needs. Digital learning should be prioritized in new educational initiatives and funding. In the TVET area alone, we estimate that for every dollar that's put into digital learning, it will have the same impact as the equivalent of $10 of investment in traditional bricks and mortar development. We can do more, we can reach more, and it can cost less. It is my hope that in the near future, we can finally do away with time-based and age-based learning in favor of personalized learning, learning that occurs when and where you need it throughout your lifetime. I call this just-in-time learning. This is what the new pedagogy is and what we educators are calling Hutagogy or Learning 4.0. This is what educational transformation looks like and is what many of our members at World IDEC are doing now to bring new concepts into reality to develop a new generation of tools, contents, and systems for use by the world. Before leaving, I would like to share with you a framework or roadmap for planning of digital learning that we use to divide up activities, investments, and efforts and energy into three areas. We call this the 3I approach. Infrastructure, infrastructure, and infoculture. Infrastructure is well known as the first thing that is normally addressed. It includes hardware such as PCs, laptops, uh, tablets, or smartphones, bandwidth or access to bandwidth, networks, and support. Infrastructure includes the platforms like learning management systems, classroom management systems, school management systems, digital content, assessments, and software. The last of the three eyes is perhaps the most important and is the one that is often most overlooked. We call it infoculture. This forms the ability to use those other two elements together to conduct digital learning effectively. It is about the infusion of digital learning into the curriculum, upgrading the teacher skills in digital technology and supporting them in the long term. It is about school and learning policies and change management. All three areas of the three eyes need to be balanced and implemented in order to have successful and effective outcome. I will leave you with that thought. So let us begin the session and let our imaginations roam together and be inspired by your speakers today. I will be monitoring the chat feeds on the WOVA app and the YouTube channel, so please let us have your comments during the sessions and we will do our best to answer them. I hope you enjoyed today's presentations, panels, and discussions. Thank you very much.